Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to enable and set up breakout rooms in your Zoom class sessions. Now if you want to be able to use breakout rooms in Zoom, the first thing you need to do is enable that for your account. And so this is maybe the most complex part of this because you can't do it from Brightspace and you can't do it from within the Zoom app itself. You need to come to the Zoom website, which for us is zula.zoom. US, X -U -L -A .Z -O -O -M .US. All right, and as long as you've got your account linked already, it's going to ask you to sign in to your account. If you haven't done it recently, it may ask you for your username and password. But if you have done it recently, it'll take you straight in. So if you're not familiar with this part of Zoom, this is the web interface. Um, you can see all of your scheduled meetings. You can see previous meetings. You can access all of your recordings. You can do uh, reports. There's a whole lot of things you'll do, and we'll, we'll have some separate videos that explore those. But today we're just going to focus on setting up and using breakout rooms. So in order to enable breakout rooms for any of your hosted meetings, you need to come over to and click on Settings from this left side menu. Now, I warn you, there's a whole lot of settings in here, and it is worth coming back here at some point and just kind of taking a look and seeing what they are, because you can you can change a lot of default settings um, that may be of interest to you. I'm not going to take a time for all of those. I'm going to scroll down, and you want to come down to about halfway down the page, uh, underneath where it says In Meeting Advanced. And so these are the advanced settings. And right under that, you're going to see the option for Breakout Rooms. Uh, you want to make sure this toggle switch is turned on right? so it's not grayed out. And just uh, to be careful, this is an advanced feature that we're going to talk about in a separate video. But go ahead and click this uh, checkbox right here that says allow host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. And as you're making these changes, Zoom may give you a little button that asks you to save your settings. Once you've done that, though, uh, you're good to go. Okay. So we're going to close out of here, and we're going to go join a Zoom meeting. I'm going to go ahead and just use my personal meeting space, which is always handy for ad hoc meetings. All right, and now I'm in my meeting or my class, and just imagine that I had 20 or 30 students um, in here with me. Right? So now if I, oh, this is the big difference, right? Because before you turn that option on, you didn't have this breakout rooms button down in your menu, and this is only available to the hosts. This is not available to students. This is not available to participants. This is not available to co-hosts either. It's only available to the primary host of the meeting, whoever that is, right? So you're, you're, if you set up this meeting, if you scheduled it and logged in as the host, you're the only one who can control this. Um, if your screen is a little bit on smaller, um, the breakout rooms button may be condensed into this more button, right? But it's the same thing. All right, so let's say we're having class and I want students to do um, some think, pair, share. Um, and so I want them to get with uh, one other person um, and talk for five minutes about some question I've asked them, right? In the real world, when we were doing this, they would move their desks around or just turn to talk to somebody, right? Once we kind of prompted them a little bit to do it, right? Um, but in the virtual world, um, we have to kind of think about this a little bit differently. Now, they could just kind of all talk at once, but that's going to be pretty confusing. So that's what breakout rooms are really useful for. So let's say I gave them the instructions. And if you're going to use breakout rooms, you want to give them the instructions ahead of time. Because once they go into the breakout rooms, there's no easy way to talk to everybody in the class anymore. Because they're all in their own little separate kind of mini meetings. Right? So give them all of the instructions ahead of time. Um, if you've got it on a slide, that's great. If you can put it in the chat box or something. But make sure you're very clear about what you want them to do in these breakout rooms. But when you're ready to send them to breakout rooms, um, all you need to do is click on the breakout rooms button. You'll get this box. You'll have two options down here. You can either do it automatically or manually. Manually just lets you assign, create each room uh, 
by hand, right? Do each one manually and then put each student in each breakout room, however you want to do that. Right? which is fine and makes sense, but it takes a little bit of time, and it's not the kind of thing you can do um, while you're talking to the students, right? Um, so unless there's a real kind of urgent reason for having them in designated breakout rooms, I would just go ahead and use the automatic setting. And then, like I said, in a future video, we will show you how to set up breakout rooms ahead of time before class and have pre-assigned breakout rooms, but that's a, that's a different process, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn on automatic, right? Zoom tells me how many participants I have in the class, right? Normally I would have 25 or so, right? And then I'm just going to tell it how many rooms I want. Um, and it'll even do the math for you down here, right? It will say how many participants per room you're going to have based on how many rooms you've given it. So I said I was going to do a think pair share. So two students in each group. Um, let's say I've got 24 students in the class. So I'm going to give them 12 rooms, right? Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just click on Create Breakout Rooms. Now, nothing's going to happen yet for the students. But Zoom's going to give me a little window that lets me preview those breakout rooms, right? And it's just going to give them basic numbering. I could rename them if I want to, um, but again, there's no need to, right? Um, and then I could do a little tweaking here. Let's say I had um, one student who ended up in a room by him or herself. Maybe I only had... 22 students or 23 students show up, right? And so maybe I'll take that one student and reassign them to one other group, right? You can do a little bit of tweaking here with that before they go off to their breakout rooms, right? You can also take a look at a couple of options that you'll want to think about um, as well. So let's click on this button down here, right? Move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. So when I'm ready to go, when I create the actual and open the rooms, which is what Zoom calls it, opening the rooms, do I want them to just get automatically moved into those rooms, right? Or do I want them to get a little window that a uh, message that says you've been invited to join breakout room number one and then give them the option of joining or not? I find it's just easier to do it automatically. Just tell them ahead of time what you're doing. Um, and then send them off into the rooms. But again, it's your call. Do you want to allow participants to return to the main session at any time? So the main session is this, the main meeting room where you're going to be by yourself uh, while the students are off in these breakout rooms. And it can be a little, little bit eerie because you're suddenly in this kind of uh, empty void by yourself. Right? Um, but do you want students to be able to kind of pop out of their breakout rooms and come talk to you for a minute in the main breakout room. And again, I find that's useful if students have a question um, or they need to talk to you about something, about a late assignment or something, they can they can still kind of do it. The same way if they came up to the front of the room to talk to you while they were doing group work in the real world. Right? But again, you can, you can choose to have, give them that option or not. Do you want to give uh, them a hard deadline or time for the groups, right? If you say you've got 10 minutes to do this, is that kind of 10 minutes when everybody's ready, or is that going to be after nine minutes and 59 seconds, you know, you're done, right? So you can give them a hard deadline, or you can, or you can just kind of say, I'll give you 10 minutes, and then you can close it after 10 minutes manually. And if you're going to have the breakout rooms close automatically, do you want to be notified um, when time is up, right? And then finally, do you want to give students a countdown before their breakout rooms close? So whether it's done automatically or manually by you, do you want them to get a little message that says, hey, this breakout room is going to close in 60 seconds or 30 seconds or 120 seconds? Right? Again, it's helpful. They can, they can finish up their, their thoughts before they get pulled back into this main room. But those are the options you can do here. When you've got everything set up, you've given the students the instructions for what you want them to do, you go ahead and click on Open All Rooms, right? Um, and like I said, if you've got that option set for moving them automatically, um, they'll just start disappearing from the screen and their names will show up in these rooms and you'll see that they're in their rooms, right? So you keep this window open, you can make sure the students don't actually like log out of the class. Um, or anything like that. And also from this room, once the rooms are created, um, you can go and join any of the rooms you want to. So if, if, if you just want to check in on them, or if you need to talk to one group in particular, you can go and do that. If they have a question, they can click on a button that'll pop up a little message for you that says, um, you know, this student in group one has a question, and then you can click join, and you'll go into their breakout room um, 
answer their question, and then you can pop back out here. So that's the basics of uh, enabling and uh, starting to use breakout rooms. If you have any questions, uh, give us a call at CAT or send us an email. Otherwise, uh, good luck and uh, keep teaching Zulu.